Hi there, I'm Skaji. I'm a practicing witch and a professional tarot nerd, and I'm glad you're here. Recently, I was asked by a client about beginner books. What are some good beginner books? And Well, that depends. It depends really on, on what you're looking for, what kind of path you're seeking. You see, there's, there's not just one witchy kind of thing. There's lots of them. And it's, we often call those, you know, paths or traditions. And there's one large umbrella of witchy stuff. And then under that, we have that paganism umbrella. And then under that, we have Wicca and traditional witchcraft and paths that derive from various cultural backgrounds. There's Celtic revivalism. There's Asa True. There's a wide variety. And even within the religious side of the practice, as in Wicca, there are traditions there as well. You've got Gardnerian coming from Gerald Gardner and Alexandrian from Alex Sanders. There's Dianic and um, Italian stuff and Celtic stuff. It's a huge umbrella. So telling somebody where to start really depends on kind of what they're interested in. A lot of times a brief discussion will kind of narrow down kind of where their interests lie and helps me understand what kinds of things they might um, respond to, the things that might really interest them. When I started out, back in, in the Dark Ages, we, we had just invented the wheel. And there weren't wonderful little shops all over the place. And I relied on my friend um, to kind of point me in some directions. So today I kind of want to be that friend. But I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the, the witchy books that I started with. The very first witchy book I read was Wicca for the Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. And, uh, and this is the actual copy that I started with. It's an easy read. Um, it's very accessible. And the thing that struck me most about this was his approach of, this is how I do it. Give it a shot. If it doesn't work, try something else. Do what works for you. And I really responded well to that, especially coming from a religion, I mean, a, a rigid religious faith tradition. Um, grew up in the Baptist church in the south of the U.S. And uh, I liked that flexibility. I liked that find-your-own-way seeker kind of approach. So this was the, the first witchy book that I encountered. And, and then I encountered Uncle Bucky's Big Blue Book. Now, this is by Raymond Buckland, The Complete Book of Witchcraft. And I'm not the only person that's ever called it that. Um, I meet people from other places that I've never met before. And they refer to it as Uncle Bucky's Big Blue Book. And what I really liked about this book is it's um, had lots of pretty pictures, but it's also, oh, and it's, it's got these, it can tell you how to make your own stuff. Oh, it's got patterns and things. That's really cool. But it's also kind of like a workbook kind of thing. All right? And, and this is the first copy I ever had. And, and I didn't write in the book. Um, it's a thing that you don't write in books, um, even if it's a, a workbook. I did everything in notebooks and, and whatnot. But um, it, it's another great overview of uh, witchcraft with a, with a Wiccan kind of flavor. And another book that I started off with, um, and in preparing for this, I, I looked at it again amongst some circles of, of witchy kind of folks. Um, this book kind of gets a bad rap, and, uh, and I don't think it's really deserved. 
Um, but it's uh, To Ride a Silver Broomstick by Silver Raven Wolf. And, yeah, it's got sort of a, you know, cutesy little artwork on the front. And this, too, is the copy I had when I started out. And this, this book has been around for a long time. I've been practicing for about 30 years, give or take. And as I was looking back through it, um, there are some there's some stuff that that, that isn't my thing, um, but for not having something else, it was great. And there are folks for whom this this material would be a great guide. Just like when we're when we're speaking in front of groups, we have to kind of speak to our audience. Um, this book is great for its audience, but it's not a bad book. And you can hear me putting the books in the pile over here because there's a lot of them. This is another book that I started off with. Um, Janet and Stuart Farrar's A Witch's Bible Complete, which is a compilation of two of their books. And they're very British tradition or Brit trad. Um, there's some rigidity in the way that they do things, but there's some there's some history and some folklore and some other other good interest. It's a very dense book. You can see maybe how tiny the print is. And you can see my little flags where I've flagged things. And this one is another one that I've had a very long time. You can see I've had to repair it. Um, and every one of these books, you know, has its issues. And all of these books are older. Um, where they talk about folklore or history, there may have been more recent scholarly works that kind of question some of their assumptions. But for the for the meat of beginners, this was great for me because it, it, it really moved me along and and I enjoy the let me find out more information elsewhere. Another one of the books I started off with is by Isaac Bonowitz. It's real magic. First person in the United States to earn a an, earn a PhD in thaumaturgy. Um, did that in California. And this book came out of his doctoral thesis. It's got a lot of, a lot of, uh, it's in the 70s when this was done. So there's a lot of parapsychology and psychical research and talking about psi or, or psychic abilities and stuff. But it does get into some interesting theories about uh, magic and correspondences and the way things are connected. And coming from, uh, a science background at that time, um, this really spoke to me as well. And another book that, that I really enjoyed, that you don't see too much of today, is was Wiccan Warrior by Kirk Cahillan. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, this fellow was a, was a Canadian police officer and was an out Wiccan um, and wrote, wrote the Law Enforcement Guide to Wicca and was very involved in community awareness, making other folks outside of our faith and magical traditions aware of who we are and um, kind of dispelling, dispelling uh, misconceptions. Um, but it also, it also spoke to... Um, Another part of me, the almost a, a, a do-it-yourself kind of approach, a, um, take on your own path, um, don't be afraid to walk your path kind of stuff. And, and that was very influential for me back then. Now, all of these books, like I said, maybe a little dated. They um, have some language that isn't necessarily dated, and every one of these authors, like every other human, may have some of their own biases that come through in their work. What I tell folks is, is when you're reading something, read it with discernment. And don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. What I mean by that is just because there's a one thing that 
that irritates you or bothers you or doesn't seem right doesn't mean that the rest of the information is invalid. So we have to read our, our books with, with discernment. Now there's a, several contemporary authors, uh, more, more recent books that, that I do like and that I recommend to folks. Um, the first of, of those is, is Christopher Penzak is a fantastic author um, and uh, writes very accessibly and has written a bunch. The Inner Temple of Witchcraft is a great starting place. It's, it's a 101 kind of book, um, but there are many, many others that, that he has written too that uh, it wouldn't be a waste of your time to explore. Another author um, that I recommend for folks, and I don't have a whole lot of her stuff, um, but I've browsed through a bunch. I happen to be around books a lot. Um, Ellen Dugan is another good author um, and Natural Witch is a, is a book that um, is a good 101 level book. A couple of more recent authors than those folks are Jason Miller and Matt Oren. Um, the Jason Miller stuff I've read, I wouldn't classify it as 101, but they do have some things that beginners could make it through. Because the key to a beginner book is, um, is it accessible? And does it provide basics, the, the basic um, overview of things? Um, same with Matt Oren's Stuff Psychic Witch um, is one of, one of theirs. And all of these things um, and all of these authors are really doing good work in helping expand the stuff. Now, there's a lot more than that. There are, once upon a time, you couldn't find a lot of this kind of stuff. It wasn't as all over the place as it is now, but with the, with the interwebs and access to a lot more than we used to have access to, there's just tons and tons and tons of, of folks writing. So when you're, reading, when you're reading stuff, you have to be sure, like I said, you're, you're reading it from your own perspective with a sense of discernment. Right? You have to question it. Is this, is this part of my path? Now, before I talk about tarot books, I've got, got one thing to say. I believe that when you're studying the tarot, you don't start with the books. You start with the cards. Get familiar with your cards. Look over your deck. Look at it before you read the books, and then move on to the books. We want to read cards, not books. The books are great. They come along, they help us out, but start with your cards. Having said that, and in a hypocritical sense, that is not the way I started. Um, it took me a while to learn that I would have learned better another way. The first book that was ever put in my hand, this is not the original copy, is The Pictorial Key to the Tarot by Arthur Edward Waite. And it went along with the Rider Waite Smith deck that was first published in 1908. So this was written during that time period, and it reads that way. It's got a lot of that you know, Victorian style language, and uh, and it's got some. It's it's kind of deep. It's it's couched with a lot of uh, Western esoteric language. Um, but this was the the first book I read. The second book I read. And this is a, an additional copy I got. I, I think this book's out of print, so I bought me an extra copy. The first one I got is a little tattered. Dictionary of the Tarot by Bill Butler. And the great thing about this one is that when Mr. Butler is talking about cards, he's showing, and I don't know if you can see it there, but it's, it's descriptions of different styles of decks, like Marseille, Waite, Aquarian, Crowley. And then a list of generalized uh, interpretations from lots of different authors. Case, Crowley, Douglas, The Golden Dawn, Eden Gray, Grimaud, Paul Husson. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And that was great because I got to see how these authors were similar or where their differences were. And it was very useful 
in, in broadening my interpretations of the cards. So I really enjoy this one, and it's like I said, I bought another copy because I it's it's one of those kind of things that you keep. Speaking of things you keep going back, I discovered that I have actually three copies of the Solitary Practitioner by Cunningham, um, and I've done that because I loan a copy out. And then time goes by, and I think I'm not going to get it back. So I buy another one to have on the shelf. And sometimes folks return books that I loan them. There are some books I will not loan. But the, the, the Wicca one is, uh, is one I'll loan out. Now, there are some contemporary um, tarot authors that I do enjoy and that I would recommend. Um, I'm going to start with this absolutely massive home. Look at that. That thing's huge. Um, and it is, um, it's by Benabel Wynn. It's called Holistic Tarot. And it is dense. Really dense. But it's, it's a great book. Um, and can provide a lot of insight. She's got a very broad base of knowledge. So this is a this is one I would recommend. And I have not read this book cover to cover. I go through and dig through it every now and then. Um, so I'm slowly making my way through it. But uh, I do use it as a resource. Another author who, whose work I, I really enjoy is uh, Bakara Wintner. Um, WTF is Tarot. Kind of an irreverent title, right? <clears throat> and it's not quite as massive a tome, but it, it takes a different approach. Um, Benabel Wen is it's very structured, and there's lots of info there. And the information in this book is less structured, um, as the title might hint at, but great information. Um, we can see two different approaches between these two books, a more scholastic approach and a more free form or, or intuitive approach with this book. Both are worth reading. Another author that I really like, and I, um, I kind of want to be her when I grow up, um, Mary Kay Greer, is a fantastic author. And she has been doing tarot stuff for a while. Got a great website. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below. And she's just got fantastic books. And most of her stuff um, that I do have, I have I have Kindle editions of. We'll talk about those in a minute. Barbara Moore um, is another author who has written a lot on the tarot and designed or been involved with the design of lots of different decks. So is Mary Kay Greer. Um, they're both fantastic writers and, and have a lot of wonderful and useful things to say about the tarot. Now, if you really want to deep dive, deep, deep dive and nerd out on tarot, these next four books absolutely have to be on your shelf. It's the four volumes of Stuart Kaplan's Encyclopedia of Tarot. Stuart Kaplan um, is one of the reasons we have so much tarot available to us in the U.S. today. While traveling overseas, encountered some tarot decks, and oh, that's kind of cool, and ended up founding U.S. Game Systems, in 1968-1969 and uh, started selling and distributing tarot decks. Mr. Kaplan ended up with what is quite possibly the largest tarot collection of decks and literature and whatnot um, privately held in the world. It just, just really, really went with the tarot thing. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of decks that are sold, at least here in the U.S., are uh, published or distributed by U.S. games. 
And like I said, there are four of these. Lots of history and stuff like that. Now, I don't know if they've mine may be a little bit dated. I don't know if they've been updated, but you can kind of see that those are really heavy. <sighs> But when I'm doing stuff and I'm talking about uh, tarot history and stuff, um, this is one of the places that I go to. Something else I want to say when, when we're talking about things to study on, a, on a, a witchy or a magical or a spiritual path, don't just read the witchy books or the tarot books. We also want to take a much more holistic approach. We want to study art and history science, psychology, poetry, literature. Human spirituality isn't trapped in a building a couple of days a week. Human spirituality, if we live it, spans the entire spectrum of the human experience and human endeavors. And we can find stuff that helps us along the way and helps us uh, walk that path in a more fulfilling way, personally. If we look at that broad thing, um, I read stuff on archaeology. Um, I read, um, especially like stuff on, on psychology. But I also look at art and symbolism. Um, math and geometry comes up in, some, in, in the concepts of sacred geometry. Uh, philosophy. Um, even if it's a philosophy that I don't necessarily agree with. Broaden your, your base. Don't just limit yourself to one thing. Now, I prefer what we might call you know, real books, the stuff that's bound and you put it on a shelf and it has that wonderful smell. But that's not the only place. I'm not saying just go get books. I mean, do go get books, but Kindle books, that's kind of a, an example of my library, and I don't know if you can read that, but Kindle books are just fine. They're books that have words in them, all right? If that's what you have access to, or if that's your preferred method, that's great. I'm pretty busy these days, and so a lot of my reading is actually done with uh, um, audiobooks. And those are perfectly valid ways to read books, too. Um, some folks have difficulty sitting down with a book, but an audio book, they can stick with that. Do what helps you get the information in your head. So, audio books are great. Um, get you a public library card. There may be stuff that you could borrow from the library, even through interlibrary loan, um, that you might not otherwise have access to. Um, support your, your libraries. We need them. I've saved this internet-y thing for the, for the last little bit. Internet sources can be fantastic and they can be complete crap. And sometimes if you search for a thing and you look at it and then you continue your search at another place, suddenly all of these things start to read the same. They've, they've done that cut and paste thing. And I can, I can attest to this. They'll let just any old body put stuff up on the internet. And, you know, make a YouTube video. Well, there's nobody standing there at the, the, the gate. You just do it. So make sure that you're taking stuff that you get off the internet with, with a grain of salt or a truckload of salt. There's great information out there, but we have to weed through the chaff to get to the wheat and, and, and be smart with the, with the information that you use. When you're shopping for your books or your supplies or your tarot decks, whenever possible, please shop locally. And by locally, I mean when you have access to places, um, small businesses owned by people that live in your community, you keep the money in that community um, instead of it going off to some big corporation somewhere else. 
support your local communities. Because a lot of times those local shops also support the community in other ways by providing venues for people to meet, to network, and having access to something like that can be really supportive for people in their path. So whenever possible, shop at your local shop. And uh, um, I think that you'll get a lot of mileage out of that. Now this client I was talking to also um, had another question for me other than beginner books. and um, She explained that while her fiancé was not interested in following a, a, a witchy kind of path, he was interested in learning more about her and what she does. And he wanted to understand her better, and that's fantastic. Um, <clears throat> I, I gave him a little set of applause. Um, the only things, though, that I could think of are some fairly older books. There's some that They're not recent. Um, the first one that came to mind was a, a, another book by Scott Cunningham. It was put out in 1997 by Llewellyn. It's called The Truth About Witchcraft Today. And it goes through, and it this is a book designed um, for folks who want to understand what their, their loved ones are, are interested in. Um, and it goes a long way in talking about uh, Wicca itself as its primary focus. And there's another one um, written by Carl McCullman. Um, nice guy, I've met him. It's a, wrote this in 2003, and it's When Someone You Love is Wiccan, A Guide to Witchcraft and Paganism for Concerned Friends, Nervous Parents, and Curious Coworkers. And it, it goes through, and it, it's sort of a question-answer kind of format. And, uh, and it goes through lots of different things. Um, so those are two. There may be some others out there, and if you know of any, drop the titles in the, in the comments for me. And if you would, if you have any other starter book suggestions, or maybe just want to tell me about the, the first book you read um, that kind of started you on your way, please comment that. Let me know. Um, I like knowing about what, how other people have gotten on their path. And I think that's, that's about it for right now. Um, thanks for spending your time with me today. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. If you did, you know, like, subscribe, share, comment. I'm Skaji. Safe journey.